Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Welcome back to this week's Tomahawk TV News. I'm your host, Victoria DeStratis. And I'm your co-host, Caden Manage, bringing you the latest in local news. This week, we will have a gaming review with Garrett and Brady on Black Ops 4 in this week's NHS Gamer. After that, Chris XL and Drake Haha will be acting out a couple of memes for their Meme This segment. Also, be sure to leave suggestions for future memes on Twitter at Meme This One. Following out the cooking chicks, Chastity and Brooklyn will be making picks in a blanket. And for our final segment, we will be having an interview with Miss Messer, the junior class prom sponsor, in this week's Indian Insight. To start us off is Blake with this week's Tomahawk TV Sports with his news and input on Super Bowl 53 and our local basketball teams. Thanks, Caden. Today we're going to talk about how boring the Super Bowl was. Welcome back to this week's segment on Tomahawk Sports. I'm Paco, and I'm here with Blake, and we're here to bring you the latest and greatest sports news of the week. In local news, the Nakona Varsity Girls played an amazing game against Childress on the road to the playoffs. Avery Kleinhans did an amazing buzzer beater, winning the game for the Lady Indians. The final score was 43-40, keeping the Lady Indians' winning streak alive. Talking about a winning streak, the Lady Indians also win in a nail-biting game against Bowie, with the final score being 38-34. This win makes them district champions. Great job, ladies. The Varsity Boys team also played Bowie, but unfortunately, they fell short to the Jackrabbits. The Indians played a great game, and so did Alex Diaz. He hit some amazing threes when Nakona needed them, and also went on an amazing 8-0 run in the last two minutes. The final score was 45-55. Great job, Indians. In national news, on February 3rd, the most boring and lowest scoring Super Bowl was played. The Patriots came out on top of the Rams, with the final score being 13-3. This win secures Tom Brady's sixth Super Bowl win. What's really crazy is when Tom Brady was playing in his first Super Bowl in 2002, the Rams quarterback Jared Goff was in kindergarten. Crazy, huh? Now it's time for our Sports Fellow of the Week. We're going to have to give this sports fail of the week to Tom Brady. Tom Brady sees Chris Hogan open, but as soon as he throws it, he feels it come off his hand wrong and turns the ball over. Well, that's all we have for this week's segment of Tomahawk Sports. Tune in next week for more sports news. I'm Blake, signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Back to you, Caden. Congrats, girls, on being district champs. Now let's head on over to Gary and Brady for a review on Black Ops 4. Thanks for the introduction, Caden. Welcome back to the NHS Gamer. I'm Brady, and this week, I'll be going over everything you need to know about Black Ops 4. Black Ops 4 completely broke away from all the other Black Ops games and decided to polish up a game previously known as PUBG. PUBG 2, also known as Blackout, has revamped weapons and attachments. I also really liked how they replaced the harnesses with armored vests. The multiplayer aspect of Black Ops 4 is spectacular, stunning graphics, and all the way around great gameplay. I especially enjoy the new equipment usable by a specialist. My favorite is Ruin. The others are amazing, but I've always had a sweet spot for Ruin. Ever since I saw him back in Black Ops 3, I knew he was my main specialist. Moving away from the conventional multiplayer, Zombies is always a huge selling point for a lot of these games. Since Black Ops 1, the fan base for first person shooters was hooked on Black Ops Zombies. The story in Zombies is always a spectacle to behold, from Dr. Rick Toffing turning all the Nazis into zombies, all the way to ancient gods putting a curse on all of humanity because someone misused their artifacts. But that's not for us mortals to ponder. But in all seriousness, this rendition of Black Ops is an all around great title. We here at the studio think that Black Ops 4 is a nice piece of any Black Ops collection, and we encourage you to play it for yourself. Now let's visit Drake Haha -ha with Meme This. Oh. 
Thank you, Brady, for that exciting BO4 review. We're all excited about it. <gasps> What's up, guys? It's Drake Haha -ha here with another meme this. And don't hate, don't forget about me. Hey, you're not important. Anyways, this week and the next weeks, we're starting two new things for meme this. First, we're doing Twitter suggestions for memes. And second, we're doing what we call meme themes, where we take stupid and popular things and make them the theme of the meme. And now, without further ado, let's get right into the memes! Our first meme we are going to be doing is the what is the Krabby Patty secret formula. Here's our original. Okay, Google, what is the Krabby Patty secret formula? On the website Hollywood.com, they say, <laughs> we do know that the hamburger consists yes. of lettuce, cheese, yes. tomatoes. And now for our version. Hey, Google. What is the Krabby Patty secret formula? On the website Hollywood.com, they say, we do know that the hamburger consists of lettuce, yes. cheese, tomatoes, yes. tartar sauce. Yes. Man, who knew? I did. Shut up, no one asked you! Next we're doing the no chair meme. Here's the original. And here's our version. <laughs> The shrink in that kid's legs is phenomenal. And now we have our Twitter meme of the week. This meme was sent to us by RTOW Cade on Twitter. Duh. This is the original. What really happened on that Thursday here at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death? <laughs> and here is our version. What triggered the events on that Thursday here at Nocona High that caused the death of Chris Lemon? Woo! What the heck was that? Dude, we just got gnomed! Dude, you're right, that sucks. And now for our last meme. You better hide your pennies! Because we're doing the I smell penny memes. Here is the original. Finally, now I can keep these pennies to myself. What the I smell pennies! And now for our version. Man, I can finally have all these pennies to myself. What the heck? I smell pennies! <laughs> For real though, that's scary. Not really. But if it came running after me and my pennies, mm, I would run too. That's all for this week. Don't forget to go shoot us up with some memes on our Twitter. At meme this one. Oh, why thank you. Ah, next we have Chastity in Brooklyn on the Cooking Chicks. See, See you, you next, next week. week. Thank you, Chris XL and Drake Haha. -ha. Welcome back to this week's segment of The Cooking Chicks. I'm Brooklyn. And I'm Chastity. This week we are making mini crescent dogs. These crescent dogs have 60 grams of calories, 4 grams of fat, 5 milligrams of cholesterol, 230 milligrams of sodium and 2 grams of protein. I love how you added the 2 grams of protein for me, you know. Started working out at the gym, trying to get a little swole, get a little six pack, you know. <laughs> yeah, you needed that protein to build that muscle. <laughs> the ingredients we're going to need this week are 2 cans of Pillsbury Crescent dough, about 8 ounces each, 48 cocktail sized sausages or hot dogs. We used three 12 ounce packages because they didn't have the 14 ounce packages. Hey, you gotta improvise when you gotta improvise. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So the first thing we are going to do is heat the oven to 375 degrees. And then we're gonna unroll both cans of dough. Separate into 16 triangles. Cut each triangle lengthwise into three narrow triangles. Place sausages on the shorter, shorter side of each triangle. And then you're going to roll up each triangle, starting at the shortest end and rolling to the opposite point. Place point side down on two ungreased cookie sheets. Bake 12 to 15 minutes or until golden brown, switching the position of the cookie sheets halfway through baking. Immediately remove from cookie sheet and serve warm. Good. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They're delicious. I'll just take the, but I want the rest. No. 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 <laughs> that is all for this week of The Cooking Chicks. Join us next time for more cooking. Back to y'all, Caden and Victoria. Thank you, Chastity and Brooklyn. Those pigs in the blankets look delicious.
Welcome to this week's Indian Insight. Today we will be interviewing Miss Mester, the junior class sponsor, about her upcoming prom. Recently, the Nakona High School junior class has started preparing for the upcoming 2019 prom. Now on to our interview. Um, this year we just did one fundraiser where we're selling signature chocolates. Uh, the juniors all agreed that they only wanted to do one fundraiser if we could. So that's what we're trying. <laughs> we'll see how it work turns out. <laughs> Um, I like the fact that we're only having one fundraiser. I don't want to be fundraising all year, but with the chocolates, we're, we still have kids who haven't turned in their money for it. So um, we're, we haven't lost money, but I'm waiting for the rest of it to come in so that we can have every, all of it back. When I taught here before, I was prom sponsor, but then we only had it every four years. You alternate every four years. So it's been about... Uh, probably seven years since I've worked on a prom. This year though we have, uh, Miss Wright and I have made an agreement that I will stay with prom every year so I'll just be over it every year and then the other teachers will rotate so I think that will help with organization plus it'll help with the stress level of the other teachers. It'll just be one teacher who knows what they're doing and just does it. I'm excited about it. We had some issues. I say we had issues. We have um, couple of people who weren't excited about the date of it because it's going to be on April 18th which is a Thursday um, but it's going to be pretty and it'll be a nice prom. Uh, last year they had a buffet style meal. This year we're going to try to have a formal dinner which is how they used to do it years ago and so we'll do the formal dinner where you the kids sat down together with their dates and then they're served their meals. Um, Servers will come by, refill their glasses and all of that. So that's a big difference. The location's different this year. Um, it'll just be more formal. We'll still have a DJ dance and all of that, but the dinner part will be more formal. That's all for this week's Tomahawk TV News. Be sure to come back next week for more local stories, sports, cooking, memes, and gaming reviews.